clearly with the small market owners breathing down your back that they don't want a repeat of LeBron James and Chris Bosh going to Miami and Chris Ball and ultimately Dwight Howard manipulating their ways to L.A. So, you know, you understand it from that perspective. From a basketball standpoint, it made no sense because I thought it was a great trade for the New Orleans Hornets. Nobody would deny that. It clearly, uh, I thought they, it gave them a lot of parts, made them better. What would have happened if Chris Paul actually became a Los Angeles Laker? On December 8, 2011, the New Orleans Hornets, the Los Angeles Lakers, and the Houston Rockets agreed to a trade that would send great point guard Chris Paul to the Los Angeles Lakers. NBA Commissioner David Stern nullified the trade, saying that the Hornets were better off keeping Chris Paul than accepting the term of the deal, which in much respect to all the players that were traded, could have been the right decision. Just kidding, I know you Lakers fans are salty. After the commissioner David Stern vetoed the trade, later the Lakers pulled out of trade talks and in return, five days later, Chris Paul was traded to the uh, Los Angeles Clippers. <laughs> but what would have happened? What would have happened if Chris Paul was a Los Angeles Laker. The whole league would have changed. Dwight Howard to LA? Would he stay with Kobe and CP3 and want some championship? How many how many rings would Kobe Bryant have? Would LeBron and Kobe ever match up in an NBA Finals series? How would the big three in Miami versus the big three in LA? What would have happened to James Harden and the Houston Rockets? Would James Harden have stayed in Oklahoma? and teams up with Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, and won an NBA championship? Where would Dwight Howard go once he was salty with the Lakers? Would he have ended up going to the Houston Rockets without a James Harden? I don't think so. Would he have gone to the Dallas Mavericks who needed a center? But ultimately, no one's going to know what happened. But in this episode, I'm going to try and do my best to see what would have happened if Chris Paul went to the Los Angeles Lakers and how the whole league would have changed. But in the end, big picture, the why is the problem I have because I think it would have been a better trade for New Orleans than it ultimately would have been for the LA Lakers. And I'm having to lean on the great John Hollinger on ESPN.com right now who says that there is no way, no way that Orlando would trade Dwight Howard straight up to LA for Andrew Bynum. The 2011-2012 season starts off with a bang. The Lakers receive Chris Paul from the New Orleans Hornets, the Rockets receive Pau Gasol from the Lakers, the Hornets receive Goran Dragic, Louis Scholar, Kevin Martin from Houston, whilst Lamar Odom also goes from the Lakers down to the Hornets, and an unprotected first round pick was Marcus Morris. The Houston Rockets select Marcus Morris from the University of Kansas. Yes, they do. Marcus Morris could have been Kawhi Leonard because Kawhi got picked one pick later than Marcus Morris, or even Jimmy Butler, who got picked 16 picks later. But the Hornets, they took Kawhi Leonard. That means Morris goes to the San Antonio Spurs. Altogether, this wasn't a bad trade for anyone when you put it that way. The Lakers roster still had Andrew Bynum, which they are using in trade talks to acquire Dwight Howard. With Pau Gasol on the Rockets, they don't feel as entitled to go after James Harden, who actually stays in Oklahoma City Thunder. They're a mid-tier playoff team, and for a few years with a lineup of Kyle Lowry, Jeremy Lamb, who they drafted and actually kept, Parsons, Pau Gasol, and Omar Asik. The New Orleans Hornets have a lineup of Goran Dragic, Kevin Martin, Trevor Ariza, Luis Gola, and the Caveman, along with the rookie Kawhi Leonard, Lamar Odom, and Bellinelli off the bench. This team was actually looking pretty decent. Unfortunately for them, Kevin Martin, who was actually a pivotal part of the team got injured midway through the season, which led the Hornets to get the fifth pick, not the first pick, in the 2012 NBA Draft. The draft ended up looking like this. Originally, the first overall pick was actually to the Hornets, which they would acquire Anthony Davis. But the Wizards now get the first overall pick, which sends Anthony Davis to the Wizards, the Bobcats still select Michael Kidd Gilchrist, the Cavaliers actually get Bradley Beal, which means the Kings get Dion Waiters, the Hornets take Thomas Robinson instead of Anthony Davis, the Trailblazers and the Warriors still get who they originally wanted, Damian Lillard and Harrison Barnes. This meant Davis joins John Wall in Washington, Bradley Beal joins Kyrie in Cleveland, and the Hornets don't gain much. Oh. 
Yeah, I forgot to mention. The Miami Heat still won the NBA championship, beating the San Antonio Spurs. LeBron was MVP. Damian still won Rookie of the Year. Dwight Howard led the league in rebounds. Chris Paul in steals because Rondo managed more assists by 0.1. And Kobe with CP3 averaged 26.5 points per game. They lost in the first round to the San Antonio Spurs, who didn't have any chemistry problems like the Lakers did, who actually had a big three of their own with Tim, Manu, and Parker. I'm pretty sure you all knew that. But it was pretty much all the same in the 2011-2012 NBA season. Kyrie was still the number one draft pick, and Miami beat Boston in the Eastern Conference Championship, as well as in the West, the OKC beat the San Antonio Spurs after the San Antonio Spurs had beaten the Los Angeles Lakers. In the end, the Miami Heat still won the NBA Finals, and the runners-up were the Oklahoma City Thunder. So in the 2012-13 season, Dwight Howard went from Orlando to LA, teaming him up with Kobe and CP3. That made a big three of Dwight Howard, Kobe, and Chris Paul. Oh my goodness. The 76ers would acquire Andrew Bynum from the Lakers, with also acquiring Jason Richardson. The Nuggets got Andre Iguodala from the 76ers, and the Magic got four first round picks, which resulted in Nikola Vucevic, Al Harrington, Mo Harkless. They also got Aaron Aflalo, plus some more players. The Lakers now didn't need Nash, so he went to the Toronto Raptors to go back to Canada, because they didn't have Lowry. Even with Nash, the Raptors didn't do well because he was injured for most of the season. In fact, they were still at the bottom of the Atlantic division. In the end, LeBron still won the season MVP, Miami beat San Antonio in the NBA Finals, and the Lakers were just trying to find team chemistry. A side note, the Thunder hadn't even traded James Harden yet, and the Rockets kept Lamb and all three future first round picks. In the 2013-14 season, the Spurs don't win the NBA championship. As they don't have Kawhi Leonard, who is on the Hornets, which now became the Pelicans, which means Kawhi Leonard doesn't win the finals MVP, and the Thunder beat the Spurs and become the Western Conference champions. But with James Harden on the squad, and no Kendrick Perkins because of the amount of money he was getting paid, it was only a matter of time before they traded Kendrick Perkins which meant it was only a matter of time before the Thunder actually won an NBA championship. So, in the 2013-14 season, the Thunder won the NBA championship. Harden actually won the finals MVP. The thing is though, Harden was only on a two-year contract because he still had his heart set on becoming a star of a team. He didn't like being the sixth man. In the meantime, a big three in LA was still trying to get chemistry. CP3 could share the rock between Kobe and Dwight, but Dwight and Kobe had a lot of beef. In the 2014-15 season, instead of LeBron returning to Cleveland, he actually stayed in Miami, and the Heat still found a way to get the gem in Hassan Whiteside, which means a team of Wade, LeBron, Bosch, and Whiteside with Mario Chalmers still there. This also means the Cavaliers with a one-two punch of Kyrie and Bill also managed to get Andrew Wiggins as the number one pick in the NBA draft. Kyrie was injured for a lot of the season, and Bill couldn't carry the team on his shoulders. Which means the Timberwolves were stuck with Kevin Love, because Wiggins joined the Cavaliers. Bill, Kyrie, Wiggins, they were looking good for the future. In terms of the 2014-15 NBA MVP, well that went to the chef, Stephen Curry. The Lakers were starting to find amazing team chemistry, even with the Kobe and Dwight beef. CP3 managed to settle them down, and the CP3 was the main facilitator, he let Kobe have his shots and Dwight have his. In fact, LeBron actually faced up against Kobe Bryant in the NBA Finals. It finally happened. The King faced off against the Mamba. The Lakers were the combination of Chris Paul, Metawell Peace, Kobe Bryant and Dwight Howard facing up against Mario Chalmers, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Chris Bosh and Hassan Whiteside. This NBA Finals series proved to be what it was hyped up to be, but it was also a pivotal part in LeBron James staying or leaving with Miami. If the Heat won this NBA Finals series, LeBron would stay in Miami. If they didn't, he was going back home to Cleveland to join Kyrie, Beal, and Wiggins. Anyway, during the season, it was actually James Harden that won the MVP of the league, even with the Oklahoma City Thunder having Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. Don't ask me why I'm showing James Harden so much love, just roll with it. 
In fact, even with James Harden winning the MVP, it was actually his last season as a member of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Anyway, LeBron James, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade were facing up against Chris Paul, Kobe Bryant, and Dwight Howard in the NBA Finals of the 2014-15 season. It was a grueling seven-game series, and guess who came out with the victory? Of course it was the Miami Lakers. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Of course it was the Los Angeles Heat. Chris Paul, Kobe Bryant, and Dwight Howard finally won a championship, and the Lakers had finally got Kobe his sixth ring. This meant Kobe Bryant won his sixth NBA championship. This made him as highly regarded as the greatest player of all time, being Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan even wrote to Kobe Bryant saying how proud he was and Kobe Bryant was finally up there with the six ring club. So with Kobe Bryant winning his six ring, Dwight Howard actually left the Los Angeles Lakers. What? Of course he still managed the NBA championship, but he couldn't take it being with Kobe Bryant. They still had mad beef. Chris Paul, on the other hand, he stayed in Los Angeles. And being the LA Lakers, always gaining big men, they gained another big man. Another one. In the 2015-2016 season, both Dwight Howard and Hassan Whiteside became free agents. The Lakers managed to acquire Hassan Whiteside and Dwight Howard, he went to the Miami Heat. It was a swap between Dwight Howard and Hassan Whiteside, which also sent LeBron James back to Cleveland in free agency. Miami didn't gain anything with LeBron James going to free agency since they lost in the NBA Finals. But the 2015-2016 season was actually a really big disappointment to both the Miami Heat and the Los Angeles Lakers. Kobe Bryant suffered injuries and the Miami Heat couldn't adjust to a winning record without LeBron James. In fact, it was actually the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors who made it, even with David Blatt leaving the Cleveland Cavaliers as a head coach. Yeah. <laughs> the Warriors and the Cavaliers faced off in the NBA Championship, but this time, the Warriors had the original lineup of Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson, Harrison Barnes, Draymond Green, the Donkey, and obviously the big Australian, Andrew Bogut. On the other hand though, the Cleveland Cavaliers, they were a whole nother team, with Kyrie Irving, Bradley Beal, Andrew Wiggins, LeBron James, and you can't forget about Tristan Thompson. This team was a lot different to the original 2014-2015, Cleveland Cavaliers. With Kyrie and Bill on the team, this allowed easy three-point shots for those two. And when they didn't need the three-point shot, LeBron and Wiggins were easily able to drive inside, either finishing with a slam dunk or kicking it out to Bill or Kyrie for a downtown three. In fact, it was actually Kyrie Irving versus Stephen Curry and Bradley Beal versus Klay Thompson. The Golden State Warriors still had the ability to stretch the floor and hit tons of threes, but the Cleveland Cavaliers weren't too bad at that either. In fact, the Cleveland Cavaliers actually won the NBA championship. The Golden State Warriors were runners up and Andre Iguodala never won the finals MVP. It turns out to be Andrew Wiggins. This means LeBron James finally got a ring in his hometown, Cleveland, Ohio. Andrew Wiggins won the finals MVP, but during the season, LeBron James actually won the season MVP, which meant he had five NBA MVPs, but only three NBA championships. I think that's right. Blame it on my head, not my heart, if that's not correct. So in the end, the next year, the Golden State Warriors would finally redeem themselves as they would make it to the NBA Finals and win it all. In fact, they would actually face up against the Washington Wizards, if you remember correctly, they had John Wall and Anthony Davis. But during the free agency period, they also managed to acquire James Harden, who left the Oklahoma City Thunder. So, when you put it that way, the Los Angeles Lakers, yeah, they would have been good. Chris Paul with Dwight Howard and Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, he would have got his sixth ring. Dwight Howard still would have left, and Chris Paul would have been an NBA champion. Obviously, the Los Angeles Clippers never get Paul, but was it actually that bad for the Clippers? They still had Eric Bledsoe on the roster, and, I mean, we know Eric Bledsoe today is one of the best point guards in the league. They wouldn't have got JJ Redick on the roster, but they still would have signed somebody like Aaron Aflalo. The Clippers still turn into a competitive team. Not the team that we know today, but a roster of Eric Bledsoe, Aaron Aflalo, a decent small forward, probably Matt Barnes, Blake Griffin, and DeAndre Jordan. It wasn't a bad roster in any means, but they never managed to make it to the NBA Finals. But in the end, the Warriors would have still won the NBA Championship just a few years later, and LeBron James' career would have been a little bit different. The whole NBA would have changed. Plenty of players would have been different, 
because of the draft scenarios that they went to. For example, Kawhi Leonard never would have been a Spur, and he wouldn't have been as great as he is now. So, you see how one trade or one event can alter the course of history. It's pretty hard to imagine this scenario playing out, but it could have played out like this. If only David Stern let this trade go through in 2011. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It actually took me so long to edit. It took me hours upon hours upon hours to edit this video. I was up 4 a.m., 3 a.m. I was even tweeting about it on Twitter, how, how late I was staying up editing this video for you guys. So, in support, I really hope if you guys enjoyed the video, you could please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new for more videos like this. If you subscribe, I'll create a playlist and I'll keep uploading videos like this. Heaps of different scenarios and that should be really fun. So yeah, definitely share this video with a friend if you think they'd enjoy it. And also comment down below, what do you think would have happened if Chris Paul went to the Los Angeles Lakers and how Kobe, Kobe Bryant, Dwight Howard, Chris Paul all would have teamed up together on the Los Angeles Lakers. Comment down below your thoughts on how the league would have changed. And also comment down below a, a new scenario that you'd like me to do. For example, what if Kobe Bryant never got traded to the Charlotte Hornets? No. My bad. What if Kobe Bryant never got traded to the Los Angeles Lakers and actually stayed with the Charlotte Hornets? Or how about uh, the Miami Heat drafted Derrick Rose instead of Michael Beasley and the big three never happened? Comment down below a scenario that you would like to see and I'll try and make it happen. Also, if you see somebody else comment your scenario or a scenario that you'd also like to see, give their comment a like because that would let me know which you know which scenarios that you'd personally like to see more than other scenarios. Subscribe if you're new for more videos like this and share this video with a friend if you think they'd enjoy. But yeah, it was a blast to edit in the end for like 20 hours, but it was all good fun. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, subscribe, share, comment. I'm out. Peace.